I have had it with jQuery. So the other day I was working on this project for a client and the client wanted to know why their application was running so slowly and they had another developer working it before me and they wanted me to figure out why it was running so slowly. So one of the things that was going wrong with it is the previous developer, they didn't know basic JavaScript so they imported the whole of jQuery, they imported this whole library just to do some basic things like looping over an array because they had no idea how to do it with regular vanilla JavaScript. So today I'm going to teach you how to do everything that you do with jQuery with just vanilla, J with just vanilla JavaScript. So you might be wondering, oh, what's wrong with using jQuery? Don't fix something that isn't broken. Well, before it was useful to use jQuery because the vanilla JavaScript ways of doing it were not easy to do at all, and they didn't really work consistently across different browsers. But today that's not really an issue because JavaScript has come a long way since then, and a lot of stuff that jQuery used to be able to do much easier than JavaScript, it just isn't there anymore. Like JavaScript, Vanilla JavaScript can do basically everything that jQuery can do now. So you basically don't even need to use jQuery anymore. So I'm going to teach you how to do things in just basic vanilla JavaScript. So let's start off with the basics. In jQuery, you'd select an element like this with the dollar sign syntax. But in vanilla JavaScript, you use this document.query selector right here and then you can use the same CSS selector syntax right here. So let's say I want to select this uh, h1 with the ID of hello so I just put in hashtag hello. And then if you want to remove an element with jQuery you would use this dot remove function it's removed. Well in vanilla JavaScript it's literally exactly the same. You don't have to do any rewriting at all in order to remove it with vanilla JavaScript. And a lot of things in vanilla JavaScript are like this. Like they've taken over for a lot of old jQuery functions so you can just substitute them for vanilla JavaScript. So with adding a class jQuery you would write dot add class active. As you can see the class active is now added. Well in vanilla JavaScript the syntax is a little bit different you just type element.classList.add and then the name of the class. So syntax is a little bit different but it's just as easy. And if you want to append and prepend things, so let me just uh, grab this container here with the here as a box and let's say I want to put this uh, header inside of this box. So with jQuery I would just container prepend that and now it's put before this inside the box. Well with vanilla JavaScript you just do the exact same thing with prepend and append of course works exactly the same as well so again you don't need to change anything with that. Let's say we want to replace an element uh, you would in jQuery you would use replace with in vanilla JavaScript exactly the same and let's say we want to fade in an element or not fade in an element, this should be fade out an element. So you would do element.fade out and as you can see it has a nice little animation and then it disappears. So we don't really use uh, these this jQuery method of animating really anymore because we now have CSS animations. So instead of doing, doing that what I would do now is just add the class hidden and then do the rest of the work in CSS. So as you can see it fades out, it's now invisible. And in the CSS I'm just uh, saying I want to give this a transition of opacity over 200 milliseconds. Basically I want the animation to last for 200 milliseconds and only affect opacity. And then whenever the class is hidden, change the opacity to zero. So basically we're fading out the opacity from one to zero over 200 milliseconds. And you have a lot more flexibility with this. You can make it fade out over one second, two seconds, etc, etc. But we do this with CSS animations now instead of jQuery animations. It's just easier to do and you can be more specific inside CSS. So that's how you fade out an element. And if you want to select multiple elements, what you do in jQuery is, uh, let's say we want to grab all of the item, we want to grab all the items with the class of item. So we just do this dollar sign syntax and that would just grab a list of all of them. 
So with vanilla JavaScript, you use document.query selector all and then dot item. So that just grabs all the items like that. And in order to show you, let's loop over each of these. So let's say in jQuery, uh, we would do items.each, and then we're just console.logging this.text. So the text inside each of these. So I'm going to open up the console. Uh, yeah, I can make this a little bit bigger. And it's just displaying the text of each of these three items. As you can see, they have the class of item, so we're grabbing all of those. But in vanilla JavaScript, you can also loop over elements with the for each. So we're taking each of these and inside the function, we're grabbing each of the items and then we're console.logging the inner text of the item. So that's another vanilla JavaScript instead of jQuery. Instead of using dot text, the type text function, you would use dot inner text. And then we get the same result. As you can see, we have these three printed to console. So that's how you loop over a series of elements in jQuery. I mean, vanilla JavaScript as opposed to jQuery. So let's go down to making an Ajax request. So this is something that jQuery used to be a lot better than vanilla JavaScript at. But now vanilla JavaScript has the fetch API, which makes it just as easy to make a Ajax request. So I'm using this JSON placeholder website. It's just a sample API. And I want to grab this with Ajax. This is the jQuery way of doing it. Uh, we're just printing this to console. And as you can see, we got the data back. But the vanilla JavaScript way of doing it is use the fetch API. So we're fetching this URL right here. And then we're getting the response. And then we want to convert the response into JSON. So we're turning this into JSON with response.json. And then we're sending the data here. And we're logging the data to the console. So you get back exactly the same result as this. I mean, you could argue that you like the syntax of this better, but this is just as easy to do. So before you used to have to do this long XML request or something like that in order to get, uh, in order to work with APIs inside vanilla JavaScript, but now we have fetch, which just makes it a lot easier. So let's say we want to make a click event. Let's say when we click on this header right here, we want to log something to the console like hello. So in jQuery, you would do element on click. But in vanilla JavaScript, you would just do one sec. Vanilla JavaScript, you would just add an event listener for the click event. And then whenever it's clicked, it'll console.log clicked. So yep, we got from jQuery and we got from JavaScript. So that's how we do that. And then let's say we want to map over an array. Let's say we have an array of one, two, three, four, and then we want to map over each one of those and print it to console. So in this one, you'd use the jQuery map function, grab the array as the first argument, and then console.log each of the values with this function right here. Now, vanilla JavaScript has this as well. It's also map, but just with a little bit different syntax. Instead of this dollar sign map syntax, you just type array.map and then the function, get the value of each of these, and then console log the value. And that's an error because I don't have that array. Okay, now it's working correctly. Now I have the one, two, three, four, exactly how you'd expect it. So that's kind of just a quick sample of everything that you can do with vanilla JavaScript. And hopefully you saw that it's really easy to work with vanilla JavaScript now, at least manipulating the DOM and doing all these small things like this. So there's not really any reason I see to use jQuery anymore. For me, it's just like a waste of space. Like you're downloading this external library for just like a handful of functions that you don't really need it for. So that's why I use vanilla JavaScript for all of my projects now instead of jQuery. I just leave jQuery out. But that's just a small sample size. If you want to see kind of a more comprehensive list 
of all the replacements. I like this article, I guess, on GitHub called You Might Not Need jQuery. So it has basically everything that you could ever need. Uh, if you want to know how to do something in vanilla JavaScript instead of jQuery, you basically come here and search for it. And just keep in mind that vanilla JavaScript keeps getting better. Like, this document is even a little bit old. Like, if you go to remove, before the vanilla JavaScript way to remove an element was you have to grab the element, go to the parent node, and then remove child. So that's a little bit clunkier compared to jQuery's version of doing it. But now, in the, in a newer JavaScript update, now you can just type in element.remove, same as jQuery. So yeah, JavaScript keeps getting better, which keeps making jQuery more irrelevant and more useless. So that's why I keep putting on JavaScript instead of jQuery. Now you might be saying, oh, but wait, what if I want to make something in Internet Explorer 8, like Internet Explorer 9, I need to make a website for boomers and they don't have any new browsers, they're still running Windows XP or Windows Vista. What do I do then? I guess I have to use jQuery. Well, you don't have to use jQuery in that circumstance either. So a cool website I like is Polyfill. And basically Polyfill are ways to get newer JavaScript functions, but have them working for older browsers. So in, uh, if you want to look this up, you can use Can I Use? dot com. Let me just go here. And let's say I want to use the fetch API that I was showing you before, like uh, grab this. Let's say I want to do this, but I want to do it in like Internet Explorer 8 or something. So let's say I want to use fetch. And it's going to say, all right, it works for all these modern browsers, but not Internet Explorer 6 through 10 or 11. All right, I got a bunch of people on Internet Explorer 11. So Instead of just using jQuery, you can use Polyfill. So if you need a specific library or if you need a specific function that's not available for your browser, you can go to polyfill.io, create a Polyfill bundle, and then they have this big list of everything that you could possibly use. So let's say I want to use the Fetch API. So I go down there, I check this, and then it gives you a script to paste inside your HTML document. So what this script has, it's completely empty for me right now. It's not giving me any code. It's just a few comments. No polyfills found for current settings. Well, that's because I'm using a new browser. I'm in a, a new, I'm in a new version of Chrome, so it doesn't need to use any polyfills because uh, fetch works correctly in my browser. But if it's loading in Internet Explorer 11, then it's gonna output a bunch of code down here that basically uh, makes fetch work correctly so that it'll work inside your old browser. So you can still write your you can still write your new javascript but just use this as kind of a backup. But honestly, I don't even use this for my projects like in Windows 10, like Microsoft has already completely replaced Internet Explorer with uh Microsoft Edge. So for me, I just use the latest version of javascript with everything and I don't really have any problems with it. But that's what you do if you really want to support old browsers. Okay, and the last thing, this is for you people who really, really love your uh, jQuery syntax. Like if you love this selector right here where you use dollar sign and the hello, you're like, oh, I really don't want to use this document.query selector. It's just so ugly. I can't live with that. Well, you have this little script over here called bling.js and it basically replaces that with your old uh, dollar sign syntax so you can use that as much as you want but you don't have to you don't have to import the whole of the jQuery library so instead of, instead of importing like kilobytes and kilobytes and kilobytes of jQuery code you just add this 15 line code to your web page and now you can select things exactly how you want to do with jQuery so if you really like your do, if you really like your do, dollar sign syntax you can do that it's totally up to you but I'm just going to keep sticking to the document.query selector. All right, so hopefully that gave you some ideas on how you can work with JavaScript without the jQuery, and uh, hopefully you got something out of that. If you liked it, leave a like, subscribe, all that stuff, and uh, I'm out for now. Bye.